Hello, I'm Simon. And I'm Hilary. And the first thing to say is that we are really sorry we can't be with you in person for the CMSA convention. It would have been so nice to be in the States now. And to be honest, this is our second American disappointment this year because we were supposed to be there in June. I was going to be teaching at a couple of mandolin camps and we were going to be doing some concerts, but for obvious reasons, it was not going to happen. So instead, welcome to our house. Uh, to our our studio here. Yes, and uh, it's a bit chilly actually today. It's isn't freezing. It? It's, I mean, <laughs> it's I've been rubbing my hands central together. Central heating to get is working warm. overtime. <laughs> it is, and to, oh, well, we. I was talking earlier in the week to a friend in Michigan, and she said it was seventy degrees there. Well, here, as I say, it's pretty chilly. So, um, so I'm jealous. Anyway, we've. Um, um, recorded all the music already so we're going to be going into that in a minute what we haven't done yet is a running order so uh, that's that's to be decided so at the moment i can't tell you what the first piece is i don't i'm not even sure what the titles are to some of these pieces because we've only just written them but uh, we'll find out very soon won't we we will yeah yeah and, and before we we move to the concert um, I'll just explain that um, we've done each track separately simply because it takes so long to change instruments in between and we'd have no no time for the music if we'd done that so I'm going to be swapping from the mando bass this wonderful instrument that I'm holding and the guitar and I'll be singing a couple of songs and Simon's going to be swapping the mandolin for the mandola and the mando cello and I might twist his arm as well to do a couple of poems. Um, <laughs> she will because she twists very hard. So, <laughs> so we will be good. seeing some of those. Yeah. Anyway, whatever the first piece is and whatever it's called, the title will appear just here at the bottom of the screen. And we'll see you in a bit. Yeah, bye. Bye. Thank you. 
As I walked out one May morning down by the riverside, there I beheld a bold fisherman come rowing with the tide. Good morning to you, bold fisherman. How came you fishing here? I came a fishing for your sweet sake on this his boat and to his stake and to this lady went he took her by the lily white hand which was his full intent he then pulled up his morning gown and gently laid it down then she beheld three chains of gold
A couple of years ago, Hilary and I published a book which had a very strange title. It's called Of Death and a Banana Skin, and there's um, probably not time to explain why at the moment. But anyway, it was a mixture of my poetry and anecdotes and Hilary's illustrations. She came out of retirement as an artist, especially to, especially to do the drawings. Yeah, and actually, I think my biggest role was persuading Simon to actually read one of his poems in public. Which, he, which is not easy. <laughs> um, reading one of your poems is like bearing your soul to the world, far more so than playing one of your tunes. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's because instrumental music is a completely abstract art form. Anyway, uh, when I do mandolin workshops here in, in the UK, I, I often get asked how to write a tune, how do you get the creative juices flowing, and I decided to uh, explain this in verse. So here's a poem called How to Write a Tune. I was playing me scales in arpeggios, melodic minors, three octaves at that. They bore me stiff like God alone knows just when am I likely to play in D flat. But then, without warning, I made a mistake. And then came another, a second, a third. They tickled my ears, so I played a retake, this time with determined intent they be heard. I jiggled my notes, adding doodles and diddles. I played with the rhythm. Slips needn't sound rotten. I gilded them blithely with twists, turns and twiddles, my scales and arpeggios now long forgotten. So, if writer's block looms its head, just supposing, while fervently forging your fugue and tocomata, then remember this tale and know that composing is oft about making the most of errata. Mm -hmm.
Ever since we've lived in this house, which is about 14 years now, there have been some pigeons nesting in a rather large yew tree, just the other side of that window over there that you can't see. And uh, we've grown quite fond of them over the years. I know they're not everybody's cup of tea, but... Oh, uh, they're all mine, actually. I, I, I really like pigeons. Yeah? Yeah. For what reason? <laughs> well, well, I had to draw them for Simon's book, you oh. see. <laughs> and and something you, you don't notice these things till you actually study something in detail. And every pigeon is different. It's just like musicians. Just like people. Yeah. Anyway, we grew so fond of them, I decided to write this little poem. It goes like this. Mm. Some pigeons lived in an old yew tree. So dense, so bushy, so tall. Each morning they'd swoop in a loop to the roof, then fall to the garden wall. Pigeons, pigeons, the young lad cried as he eyed his avian guests. How many, how many, the cook replied, this morning have left their nests. He carefully counted the corpulent birds, then pronounced his precocious reply. 3.142 and a bit, enough for a pigeon pie. We probably won't use that.
me. Mm-hmm. 